Today on the bench, I've got a non-working UPS that is not bad batteries. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it's not even turning on anymore. So you see, it does not come on with AC applied, but with, when I turn off AC, it will actually come on. And if I try to apply AC now, you'll see other than making some terrible noises, it just stays on battery. So this unit does not respond to AC power at all anymore. It was sort of responding to it before. It was kind of clicking on and off, clicking on and off and going crazy. And now uh, it's just completely dead. So. Um, I checked the batteries, the batteries are fine, so I think there's something actually internally wrong here. So we're going to take it apart and take a look. And if you want to make sure, the best way to test these batteries is to just load test them. So I use a car battery, nice bright from here, nice and bright from this battery as well. It's not the batteries. The board is out, let's take a closer look. So it might seem like there's a lot going on here, but it's not that bad. Uh, our input. Uh, comes from over here. You've got uh, uh, your line and neutral over here. Those go through a capacitor and an inductor for noise filtration. After this, we've got a number of different MOVs here uh, just for surge absorption. We have a, an inline fuse over here that's hiding here. And we have some more capacitors here just for filtering out noise. Uh, wires coming out. Uh, this UPS has two outputs on it. Uh, t these two over here are the surge jacks on the back of the UPS. So these ones provide basic surge protection, but they don't provide any backup power protection. And over here, these two out here actually go out to provide backup power. The backup one is controlled by these relays, so they will actually switch uh, mains input on and off, and they will actually switch the UPS output from the internal inverter to the mains. Whenever you're fault finding this stuff, I always like to start out with a good visual inspection. Uh, I like to look for anything that's burned, uh, and I also like to look for any components that would likely be open, uh, such as a PTC, which this does not have. I was really hoping it'd have one because that'd be an easy fix. Uh, we also have a fuse here. I tested this fuse. This fuse is fine. I've also tested continuity from the external plug all the way into here. Uh, and we have continuity as well. So it's not a problem with the breaker or any of the wiring. Uh, we do have mains making it up to here, but I think it's just not making it past the relay. I think one of these relays is actually burned out. Yeah, shaky vision, but if we look at closely at the relay, you can see that they are labeled AVR Boost. AVR Boost is a feature that uh, these UPSs have when the line voltage uh, starts to dip. They'll actually run power through this uh, external transformer to actually step up the line voltage a little bit. I think it's a bit more complicated than that, uh, but they use uh, these external transformers to actually adjust the line voltage. Now this one only has a boost feature, uh, but the better UPSs actually have a trim feature, where if the line voltage is too high, they'll actually run into, through different windings in the, in the uh, transformer and actually lower the voltage level. This one uh, just has like a very basic transformer, so this one can only boost. Okay, we're back, and um, the thing about testing these relays in circuit is that these do have back EMF diodes wired across the diode, or across the coil rather. And if you test one of these in the circuit, you have to make sure you know the correct polarity or else you'll be applying reverse or forward voltage to that dial then while well, you'll be you'll be cooking and you'll be damaging the other drive circuitry so I had no choice I had to I uh, once I realized that I can't even determine the polarity here so I had no choice but to actually desolder them and test them on the bench and of course uh, I mean I already I already ohmed them out but they both of course work fine I also went ahead and desoldered the trim relays as well and tested them and there's no problem except for one thing. If you look at this particular relay, this pin on here is too short. It's a lot shorter than the other ones. And when it was soldered onto the board, it was barely, barely making contact. So 
I'm wondering if this explains the machine gun sounds the uh, the board was was making as I, was, as I heard relay slamming on and off and it was sort of working and then this thing maybe just gave up contact altogether and that explains why uh, it won't work at all. Together, uh, whenever you're dealing with electrical equipment, you're going to power it up for the first time like this, especially high power stuff. Wear some safety glasses. Uh, if something let, lets go or, or pops, you don't want it going into your eyes. So right now the batteries are hooked up. The uh, AC mains is turned off. So I should be able to turn this on and put it in inverter mode. Yep, there it goes. So it's in, in inverter mode. I don't know if that's going to come out on camera or not. Turn that off. Okay, now let's push the actual mains power. Boy, do I feel nervous right now. Okay, mains is on. Turn this back on. Okay, and we're on but we're still in inverter mode so it's still acting like it can't sense mains or something there now now it's blinking red so it's really not happy so still got some more work to do now one thing i do see when i turn it on i do actually see the meter or the battery voltage actually start to increase that means it's actually taken in mains and it's actually recharging the batteries so that kind of proves my whole AC input circuit is actually operating even the battery charge circuit operates but for some reason it will not actually drive the relays to switch on just a quick clarification though too what I mean by AC input circuit when a mains AC enters enters this it actually gets split up two different directions one side goes to these relays which is uh, used to switch mains into the load another side of mains actually goes through this power supply circuit over here uh, we, we you know that's why we have our fuse here there's a full bridge rectifier over here there's a switch and transistor switch and transformer capacitors there's a whole secondary power supply here and this power supply is powered on all the time it does not care what these relays do so that's what I mean by the uh, AC main circuit and we know this side works because I've already gone through and tested all the passive components I also know that it's recharging the batteries and it's inverting which proves that yeah the circuit is actually powering the load and it also proves all my power transistors are working properly as well or else either recharging or inverting would not work which they both do so there's some research uh, apparently this is not an uncommon problem with these EPS's and what a lot of people are pointing at is that uh, some of these capacitors around the uh, ADC well there's no ADC on here maybe on the microcontroller but some of these capacitors electrolytics do actually dry out over time and after that the external voltage sensing no longer operates reliably specifically C40, C42, maybe C60 as well so I think it's worth uh, desoldering a few of these caps and testing them out and seeing if they're any good all right, I've gone through it. I've gone ahead and desoldered one of the capacitors, C40. This is the original one. When I try to test it, if I can keep it on the desk. Yeah, the meter just kind of bounces all over the place. Uh, so I don't know, maybe, the, maybe there is an issue with this cap. This is a brand uh, new cap over here that I pulled uh, from my spares. And it's supposed to be 22, but... When I test that, I do actually get uh, a sane reading, so I think these caps are, are actually bad. I'm going to have to go through and replace them. And we're back. I've gone through a number of these capacitors. So C40 and C41 were definitely bad cap capacitors. They both tested bad. I replaced those. I replaced a few of the others. Um, th this one, I, went, I, I did actually replace it, but I had a hard time because uh, after uh, soldering it, I cleaned up the board a little bit and I managed to damage the uh, traces holding that capacitor in. It happens with tiny traces once you heat them up and stuff. So I put down some uh, glue and stuff to hopefully hold, hold that down. And uh, yeah, ba basically with that, we're ready to just uh, start this thing up and see if it works. Okay, mains is on. 
See, at least it turns on this time. That's kind of a big difference. And you can see that mains is actually going to my test plug. I don't know if that will show illuminating on camera or not. But then once it does, it goes to inverter mode and it doesn't come out. And we're showing 130 volts out on the, multi on the multimeter, which is kind of way too high. Way too high. It should not be that high. And we're back, and I realized what I did wrong, this uh, AVR trim wire coming from the transformer. I actually had it plugged into the wrong jack on the board. So God knows what was happening. I'm lucky it didn't just blow the whole thing up. Okay, let's try it again. All right, and then we'll try and turn it on. Okay, it's in inverter mode. We're getting two volts out. So the inverter is only putting out about one, 1 1.6 volts AC, which uh, seems to be a bit on the low side, but it is on, but I've, all, I've got no voltage coming out and my AC indicator, test indicator is turned off. So, all right, so I've been in some uh, trouble shooting with this. And I've confirmed that the inverter does actually work properly. I was able to find 116 volts. But it appears that one of the relays has actually gone open, which is really weird. Uh, if we look at the back of this, this is a bit hard to see. Uh, but basically, we've got uh, one relay assembly here and another relay assembly uh, over here. You, you, you can kind of see it. Here's the, here are the two coil inputs here, and here's the actual input. That's uh, a dual throw relay and out here you have the two outputs. Well, if, I'm, if I measure this one, you can see in its default state, I'll set it deeper. In its default state, we've got continuity from here to here, which is normal. If I measure the trim relay right beside it, across this terminal and this terminal, it's coming up as open. So this tr relay must have gone bad, and the 1.5 volts I was seeing was probably just some capacitive coupling. All right, I've got the relay pulled out, and yeah, this pin back down here is completely broke, completely broken. So I think what happened was sometime desoldering and resoldering it and checking it and rechecking it actually killed this relay. So I'm gonna have to find a replacement. I went looking through a bunch of different relays, and I really have nothing that's an acceptable replacement with the right number of pins and the right voltage and the right amperage and the right this, right that. So um, in the meantime, what I've done is I've taken the, this one and I've just cut the back off the end of it. I've soldered a new leg onto it and we're just gonna go ahead and bolt that in. I'll order a replacement, but it won't be here for a very long time. So we're gonna try and get this thing going, at least for now. Okay, we're back and I've got my hacked up relay in there. I've got my hacked up solder in, in there and I'm ready to test this out. I'm gonna monitor the uh, waveform using the scope. Uh, for probing these, for probing mains, what I normally do is I just get a small AC adapter and I connect that to the scope probes. Uh, you can get a better reading by going direct to mains, but you also get some uh, risk in there as well. So just to be extra safe, you can just use an, an AC adapter uh, and then just plug that in. And we can see we've got a pure sine wave coming from the power company. They recently actually just upgraded. They got a pure sine wave nuclear reactor. So we have that nice sine wave. And uh, so we're going to plug this into the UPS and we're going to test it out. Okay, mains, power. Turn that on. We should hear some clicking. Maybe not. Okay, let's try to turn it on. There we go. We got the pure sine wave from the power company. And we'll run the self test. Okay, it goes to modified sine wave. Oh, what a great looking uh, square wave there. And there we go, we're back to pure sine wave switched right back. No clickety clackety, no wondering. And then we'll simulate a power outage here. Turn that off right away. Goes to, to its square wave. Uh, that is a really nasty looking square wave. And we'll turn that back on again finds it, switches, works perfectly, no problem at all. Um, 
So yeah, I'm gonna call that fixed for the time being. I'm gonna order a proper replacement uh, relay for it, so it is uh, good and proper for the future eventually. But for now, uh, it is working. We found the fault. It was uh, it was two bad capacitors. We added some of our own faults while fixing it, but that's just how things get done. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video.